So you've got a dual algorithm dive computer. Everything's going fine. You're setting it up the way you like it when you hit a snag. Which algorithm do you use? DSAT, PZ Plus. What are they? And more importantly, which one's best? DSAT is from Diving Sciences and Technologies. You've probably already seen this in a PADI repetitive dive table. PZ Plus is Pelagic Z Plus, which is based off the Bullman ZHL 16C data. But what's the difference? DSAT is liberal and not their voting habits, giving you the most time underwater and hopefully keeping you away from DCS, decompression sickness. PZ Plus is conservative. Its aim is hopefully to give you a larger margin of safety, keeping you further away from DCS. The downside is you have less underwater time. There is a trend for conservatism to avoid DCS. Back in 1983, I received this Paddy repetitive dive table when I did my open water course with Paddy. You probably can't tell, but the NDL no decompression limits are actually longer than on the Paddy repetitive dive table today. And what's those yellow boxes, you ask? Oh yeah, we are taught how to do a decompression stop in case we stay too long. So conservatism isn't a new thing if you look at how new divers are taught today. The first chart shows the difference between the 1983 and 2003 Paddy repetitive dive tables on air. Here's Old Faithful. It's an Oceanic 180NX dive computer. This was my main dive computer up until recently. And my backup is a little more modern. It's an Oceanic 100NX. Both are DSAT only dive computers and closely follow the modern PADI repetitive dive table. If I overlay the PZ Plus algorithm, you can visually see it's more conservative than either of the dive tables. And dropping the DSAT in the graph, you can see all the data. Now you say that's okay for air, but what about the different nitrox mixes? Yep, you're right, there's different values there. PZ Plus is definitely more conservative at shallower depths. Enough graphs and tables, let's just dive both computers and see what happens. That's me, with a pretty hairdo. Well we're 4 minutes in, so let's check our remaining NDL dive time. DSAT has 88 minutes remaining, and PZ Plus has 66. I'm only at 15 metres, as I'm on the top of the wall. Let's continue to dive this area. It's actually quite nice and calm here at the moment, and I'm enjoying this dive. Seventeen minutes in, and let's check the remaining NDL dive time. Seventy-five minutes on the DSAT, and fifty-three minutes on the PZ+. I still haven't decided to go over the wall yet. Gonna stay up here and see if I can find a crayfish. The fish seem to be pretty happy and relaxed here today also. Ah, now this is what I was looking for. Lucky for this one, the season's closed. Okay, let's check the remaining NDL dive time. Diving on top of the wall has been a lot shallower than my original plan, so I've been able to extend the dive. Now at 37 minutes in, DSAT is at 33 minutes and PZ Plus is at 20 minutes. So I'm going to head up and perform a safety stop. Looking at the dive time remaining at this depth, 332 minutes for the DSAT and 325 minutes for the PZ Plus. 22 minutes after surfacing from the first dive, I checked the dive computers. I've still got an hour of surface time before I start the next dive. When penetrating the J4 sub, the depth will be around 24 to 27 metres. Let's go diving. The J4 sub is a great dive, it's one of the shallower subs, and it's usually good dive conditions. It's broken in two, and the torpedo tubes are separate to the rest of the sub.
Hey, is that my buddy outside? Sorry it's a bit dark in the sub. 11 minutes in, checking the remaining NDL dive time. DSAT is at 14 minutes, PZ Plus is at 10 minutes. Now into the back of the sub. It's a little tight here with all the poles. Sorry if it gets a bit shaky, I've got both hands full. Here's some guys doing it hard. One's got four tanks on it and he's come through the back door. I think he spent a good five minutes just getting through there. Hey, it's good to see that diver got out of the back of the sub. 17 minutes in. Let's check the remaining NDL dive time. 11 minutes on DSAT and 6 minutes on PZ+. I'll stay on top of the sub for the rest of the dive to increase my bottom time. Okay, it's got to be getting close now. 23 minutes in, I've got one minute left according to PZ+. And there we go. Out of time on the PZ+. I'll keep diving with my DSAT computer, which is what I'd normally do. Thirty minutes in, I've got four minutes left on my DSAT and I've incurred a nine minute decompression penalty at 
3 metres. It's time to head up and do my regular safety stop. Starting my 3 minute safety stop. Nearly finished the safety stop. The PZ Plus has credited me some time for doing the safety stop. I'm now down to 7 minutes deco at 3 metres. So I'll head up and do the deco. Keep in mind, by the DSAT, the computer I normally use, I am okay to exit the water. Deco has finished and I'll hit the surface within the 45 minute maximum run time. After a 65 minute surface interval from the second dive, Let's check the dive planner. It is looking pretty similar and we could probably do a third dive if we wanted to. So a conclusion? Which is better? I think the question should actually be which is more conservative. Over my two test dives there was only a seven minute difference between the two dives and both dives were reasonably long. I think I can afford to be a little bit more conservative without losing a great deal of bottom time. I think I'll give the PZ Plus a go and see how it works out. I hope this video has helped.